This book, Peyote, History, Tradition, Politics, and Conservation, is a book that I, I just um, published a few months ago, together with my co-editor, Clancy Kevner, who I thank and acknowledge. Clancy is an incredible editor and also uh, drew this painting, especially for the cover. She's an artist as well. Uh, and, you know, I'm just going to give a few ideas of what the book addresses, but as a pretext to actually talking about peyote and what I consider the main challenges and topics involving this substance. So the book came out by Prager. It's uh, the same publisher that published the book by Tom Roberts and Michael Wilkman, Psychedelic Medicines, which I consider a great uh, reference on, on this area. And the literature on peyote is very small. And what happens basically is that there are some classics and all these guys are dead. And other than that, there's a few published books scattered, but not a lot much uh, actually. There's not a very comprehensive uh, look on peyote and this book tries to, to fill in this gap because there are some ethnographies on like traditional drug use by the Wichols or Tarahumara, Tepehuan, Cora. There's some on the Native American church. There's some on literature on um, religious and legal battles regarding peyote. Our book tried to talk about the, the field of peyote as a whole. So I think that the great merit of this book is trying to make a kind of dialogue between, on the one side, anthropology and the idea of traditional drug use, cultural symbolism, history. On the other side, the legal discussions, everything that has to do with regulation. And finally, uh, the environmental, conservationist, biological dimension of the discussion. And this is central. Uh, peyote incorporates this crossroads of topics. Uh, why? Well, as, as we have seen here, peyote has a, a large history, masculine being this first synthesized substance. Peyote has archaeological evidence of use of at least five or 6,000 years, so it's one of the most ancient references that we have of uh, psychedelic use. Peyote has been used in a multi multiple varial context, so it, it has a, a strong presence in traditional indigenous settings, it had a strong presence in the psychedelic movement, as we have seen with the, with the lecture of our colleague uh, just now. It has a, a, a strong use in folk culture. So if you go today to any, any market in Mexico, anywhere, you just can buy uh, pomatas, uh, pomadas de peyote, oilments of, of peyote that are used as topic applications for severe pain issues related to arthritis, to muscle uh, strengthening, and other uses. And peyote was central in establishing religious freedom in the US. So peyote was through the cause of peyote that the Religious Freedom Restoration Act was uh, uh, championed in the US, opening perhaps one of the most traditional uh, and important rights of us as Westerners, which is the right to religious freedom. So peyote has a, a multi, multi, uh, multiple dimensions and penetrations into our lives. In Mexico particularly, it's used, peyote is, is part of the larger cacti family. The cactus are natives to, uh, to Mexico and northern Mexico and southern Texas and cactus are completely present in people's life in every dimension. They can be used as jelly, they can be used as to build fences, they can be used as food for donkeys, they can be used as alcohol beverages, they can be used as tonics, they can be used as revitalization. I particularly suffered from an overdose of nopal while I was living in the semi-desert. <laughs> You're supposed to... to, to to laugh at my joke, because I am a vegetarian, and so they gave me a lot of nopal, which is a kind of cactus. I was living in the semi-desert, and they, they use nopal almost every day for all kinds of things. Everybody has a tip of what nopal is good for, so I say I overdosed on nopal, which is very strong um, uh, uh, taste and, and, and feeling. So peyote has the central presence in, in multiple aspects of culture. What is the main, uh, so it's not only indigenous, it's also very strong in 
for uh, mestizo uses in folk uh, uses in Mexico. What are the main topics um, or, or debates that uh, have to do with the use of peyote? And, and here, as I said, I'm just going to mention, like it's like an appetizer for you to maybe read the book. If you can't afford the book and you want to read some chapter and it's for only personal use or scientific use, please feel free to contact me and I'll help you have access to it. Um, I, I want to mention here two aspects which I consider important of, in general about peyote. I'd say that the, the topic of peyote involves two main sets of paradoxes, uh, or what in, in English people call a catch-22. Uh, first, the first catch-22 about peyote is one that is not just, uh, uh, it, it has not to do just with um, peyote, but psychedelics in general, which is the, the classifications of psychedelics as a Schedule One substance. Uh, the definition of a Schedule One substance is that it has no medical use and it has a potential of abuse. So the very uh, founding definition of peyote excludes the recognition or other psychedelics that it has potential therapeutic uses. And, and, and that is a big irony because to, to eventually change the scheduling, you would need to have scientific research that shows that the substances have uh, uh, therapeutic potentials. However, you can't really study the sub substances because they are scheduled. <laughs> so it's a big uh, vicious cycle that sort of sets the, on the beginning the very limitation for the topic. And of course, this, um, you know, there is this, the, psychedel the paradox with psychedelics is that it is not considered an enough of a social problem or uh, uh, some enough of a, a, a political uh, social problem and relevant debate. Uh, Amanda Fielding, who I see um, right there in the back, has written about this in our book, that uh, the paradox that this psychedelics are not considered enough of a, a social question in order to be discussed publicly in terms of rescheduling. I have felt that very much while living in Mexico, working on a drug policy program, and uh, the discussion on peyote was not considered legitimate for my job, because in Mexico, you have such a great drama regarding the drug war and violence, narco-trafficking, and all that, and psychedelics are not in the public radar uh, on this regard. So that's, that's one of the founding paradoxes to address the topic of peyote. It's not even considered such a relevant, important thing in Mexico, which is a, a, a society that was funded by multiple uh, indigenous groups that use traditionally a series of substances. Mexico is, according to Schultes in his classic book from the 70s, well, that published in the 70s, uh, that has the largest fauna and flower of uh, Fauna and flora, I don't know, you understand me, <laughs> on, on, uh, of, of psychedelics on earth. However, there is so little research about it. It's not considered a social topic. It's not considered important. There is no institutional support. And there's multiple contradictions on this level of scheduling. One of them is that the National Indian Health Service in the U.S. recognizes the use of peyote as a medicine in Navajo lands for treating uh, drug-related problems and alcohol-related problems. However, it stays still scheduled, which, what limits research and uh, limits the discussion uh, on changing this, um, its classification. The other, the other paradox is the, is the environmental dimension, and this will be my last uh, point on this short overview. Peyotis is a fragile cactus. It's a rare species. It's endogenous of northern Mexico and southern uh, Texas. So peyote takes many, many years to grow, and it just grows in this, uh, in this area of the world. Actually, it's a very resilient substance. Uh, one of the articles talked about how peyote survived as a species in the glaciation periods of Earth. So it has a long history as a species itself, and the exercise for us is to move our uh, anthropocentric view on peyote and think of, if we could, uh, of peyote, how would peyote see the world and how did, 
how, how peyotes came about on Earth. And from the point of view of peyote, if we take uh, a more conservationist, uh, conservative view, we are the largest predators of peyote. We human beings, uh, what, what perhaps the Pachamama lovers call a sacrament or <laughs> other people would be enthusiastic about its potentials, we are actually predators to peyote. Peyote defends itself by its strong, horrible bitterness. Uh, it's, it doesn't really have many uh, natural predators. Man is a natural predator of peyote. And so there is a huge um, ecological problem. The natural populations are in total decline. In, in a mathematical basis, we just have more mouths wanting to eat peyote than peyote can regenerate itself. So this creates a a big uh, challenge in terms of uh, conservation. And what is the catch-22? What is the paradox? The paradox is, well, it's, it, 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 is, uh, it is listed both in Mexican legislation, US legislation, and international legislation. They have uh, like a continuum of classification for the substances like vulnerable, uh, liable to become endangered, that are extinct. There's some variation on each one of the legislation. Some place it in a more uh, harder, it's not definitely not on the, on the end of the continuum, like the, the publisher wanted to change the, the title for history, tradition, politics, and extinction. I said no. I know it would sell better, but it's not really on the verge of extinction. It's not yet uh, endangered to this level, but there is a huge problem. And so what is the problem? The problem is that it's a cactus that is rare. It takes many years to grow, and we have more people eating than peyote available. However, we cannot cultivate peyote because peyote is illegal. So this is a completely schizophrenic situation. And in this regard, peyote is an example, a laboratory, a good paradigm for us to think not only of the you know, incredible, amazing, psychedelic, visionary, therapeutic effects that these plants give us, but our responsibility as humans in co-leading the survival of species, which is a, a, the conservation environmental discussion is usually kind of invisible in the psychedelic arena, and everybody's talking as if these resources were available there forever, or just, let's just synthesize the substance. But it's not just about our, our feelings about them, but it's about their right as a species. And this involves highly complex legal and cultural problems, because not only you cannot plant peyote, you cannot cultivate, but also from traditional perspectives, it's not necessarily the best solution. For example, the Wichol people, they do what they call a, a ritual gather of peyote. So they, they, they used to um, walk five or five, four days to the desert, Viricuta, the ancestral you know, uh, cosmological founding point of their, their society, of their mythology, and, and do what they call the peyote gather, the peyote hunt. Peyote is associated to the deer, and finding the peyote is like hunting a deer. So it would be kind of weird from a witch all perspective that you have a garden of peyote. That's one problem. The other problem is that for the Native Americans in the US, some branches are against cultivation as well, either because they don't have experience or the experience they have, they um, failed and did not go very well because maybe they overwatered. Uh, there is just, it's not there culturally, the idea that you should cultivate, although newer generations and more recent discussions have involved the idea of cultivating greenhouses or in the wild. I'm just coming right here before this trip for a little field work uh, trip in South Texas and found this very depressive scene, which is the scene of the dealers. You have only three licensed dealers that sell peyote in the US uh, in this region of uh, South Texas. And the dealers hire illegal aliens, Mexicans, it's right near the border, that pick peyote. And so they would you know, go and shovel it and either get it with the roll whole root or a large stem, a large part of the stem, like this big, because to proper harvest, you have to be down on your knee and cut it maybe towards near the ground. That's a lot of work. And so peyote takes more, maybe four or five years to, to regrow. 
how can we educate these um, populations to harvest it properly? Or even culturally, it's complicated if traditional populations want to get it the whole route out. How can you tell Indians not to get the whole route out? Because this system is available for small-scale societies, but not for, for the picture that we have today, which is more people eating peyote than before. Uh, so the book tries to address the complex matters between legality. The, the discussion of tradition is important, and with this I'll finish, because, uh, for example, in Mexico, you can only have traditional populations using peyote. How do you define exactly which traditional populations is complicated? The most famous are these four ones, which all caught a Tepehuan Tarahumara. But of course, Mexico is hardly, is, is, is uh, very indigenous and mixed. The problem of tradition in, in the US and in Mexico is, is this idea of exemption to traditional use. The exemption is that only religious indigenous use is allowed. Therefore, people like us are outruled and criminalized. So it's not only a problem of authenticity per se, is this authentic or not? But the problem is if you're not considered traditional, then you're criminalized and then you would end up in jail. Uh, so the crossing between the discussions of tradition and legality is important because it's not just about is this shaman real or not, but it's about how do we, if it's a limited resource, how do we define who's, who have access and how do you define what is indigenous and what is non-indigenous? Where do you draw the lines? And what kind of regulation do we want? Perhaps a mixed regulation where some traditional people would get it in the wild and other people would have to cultivate it. Those are many questions to come. I offer you to uh, study our, our book and I'm open for more uh, debate. Thank you. Mm -hmm.